Hi everybody, Greg here at the Caddis Fly Shop, Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Uh, today, I'm going to be tying up a variation of the VP anchovy. This is the original VP anchovy. Um, Captain Vaughn Podmore. Uh, he guides out of Huntington Beach, saltwater fly fishing, hb.com. Uh, he and his crew, lots of great videos, fly tying videos, and how to fish these out at the Channel Islands. Uh, he uses Unicare, which is a Wapsie product. Uh, I was using Super Hair, which is a um, nature spirit product. However, I'm going to be tying this fly with the variation with the SF Blend today. Uh, the SF Blend, Steve Farrer stuff, is awesome. I'm going to do the classic white with a black overbody, but you can tie these in black and purple. I did a little bit of blue on top of this. You can tie them in tan and white. Which according to Captain Vaughn is more of a, a juvenile anchovy. That might not look tan on the camera, but that's tan under black. Uh, easy fly to tie. I tie it on a size two, but you can tie these anywhere from a size four to a size one aught. Um, I did email Captain Vaughn. He did tell me no bigger than a one aught on this hook, just as long as you have a short shank hook, which I'll talk about in the video. Uh, I'm going to be using this for yellowtail. Uh, maybe some mahi mahi, uh, maybe even some barracuda. You never know. Uh, but join me as we tie the VP anchovy. This is a variation of his minnow. Now, uh, this is his minnow um, using Unicare, which is a Wapsie product. Um, I don't have Unicare, I have uh, Super here from UV2, the Spirit River stuff. Uh, essentially, it's the same stuff. Great fly pattern, about six and a half inches in length. Uh, tied a little bit longer because as you're fishing this, you can cut it shorter uh, to match the bait if you need to. Um, really excited to try this pattern out. However, I've also been tying this pattern uh, using SF Blend. And today, we're going to just use SF Blend in black and white. We're going to use some. UV purple crystal flash um, along with some UV minnow belly uh, just to give it that lateral line. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways to do this fly. Um, today I'm tying it on a Kona Big Game Hunter size 2. You can also use hooks like an SL12S short size 4, 2, 1, one aught. I actually reached out to Captain Vaughn via an email and I'll link the video down below his original video of the Unicare uh, minnow that he ties. Um, but he said he would not go bigger than a one aught hook. For instance, I have a 274 from A-Rex. That would be the largest for this particular fly. However, I'm tying them on a size 2 today. I'm using this Kona. The important thing though is a short shank. Um, that's why I recommend all these different hooks. Uh, the 274, the Gamagatsu S12S short. This comes in two versions. You want the short, you want that short shank. It's a very short shank fly. It's a very easy fly to tie. Um, you can use mono if you want to. Uh, 0.4 would be good. However, today, I'm just gonna use six aught black uni thread today because that's what I happen to have. And I'm gonna start off with the thread base here just to give everything a foundation. I'm just gonna take this back to the hook point like that, come back forward, just to give a really nice foundation, a thread so everything sticks together. I've been excited because um, I'm gonna be heading home for the, well, it should have been the 20th anniversary this year, but because of COVID, it's our 19th anniversary. Uh, Nesperado trip. Um, I've been going to the Channel Islands for almost uh, my entire life <clears throat> and uh, actually used to live on Santa Cruz Island when I was uh, working for the Park Service and then I, I was also a kayaking guide out there back in the day. And I did a lot of fishing with traditional gear. Uh, so I'm just excited to get back out there and go sailing around the Channel Islands uh, with two of my great friends, my Uncle John and my Uncle Dennis, Jackpot and Skipper there. Alright, so I just took some of this SLF blend. 
I took about, I don't know, almost a quarter inch and I kind of just stagger this out to give it a little bit of taper and we're going to be cutting this but I just take it right in the middle I'm going to do a pinch wrap right towards the back of my thread there, right above the hook two wraps I'm going to come straight up tighten that up, straight up, tighten that up straight up, tighten that up, really good thread wraps there and the entire time I'm going to be working this out now here in the front I want to spread this out it kind of gets knotted here so just take your scissors or a bodkin or something I'm going to divide that in half. I'm going to pull these back like so. Bring my thread in front and come up and over this. Just like so until I get some really nice thread wraps. And then I'm going to come up and crank on that and create a little thread dam right there in the front. Now you could glue this if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to be gluing this entire thing at the end. And as you can see, I worked that back it kind of covers up the bottom of that hook shank a little bit and um, any little fibers in there that I don't like I'm just going to pull those out and you can work this back with your bodkin if you have a little velcro brush or something that would work great too alright so now I'm going to give this a nice little lateral line and um, I'm just following Captain Vaughn's recipe guys um, like I said I'll put that link below he takes about six strands of this uh, minnow belly and this stuff is killer um, behind the light it shines yellow um, it's got some purples to it just a lot of really cool unique qualities I kinda staggered this out again once again right in the middle I'm gonna set it down right there loose wrap one two crank up bring that back fold it over itself and since I'm folding everything over on itself, this fly is going to be durable, especially when it's glued at the end. I kind of spread that crystal flash out with my nail to kind of get it out. And then I'm going to do some thread wraps in front, just like so. And I'm slowly working my thread forward, as you can see. Make sure you check that. Now, I've been tying these flies at about six and a half inches. Um, if you look here, you can see I'm going back about six and a half, seven inches. I prefer to tie these longer, and then um, as I see bait, I'm going to try to catch live bait too, just jigging for uh, hopefully sardines um, or anchovies. Um, I'm going to mimic that. White and black is the common one. Uh, juveniles, according to Captain Vaughn, he's got a lot of great videos put up by the guys that. Uh, Superfly, uh, they're a group out of Huntington Beach, California. Lots of great videos when it comes to fishing the Channel Islands and also just along the Southern California coast. I want to give them a, pl a plug because um, I watch their videos. There's about three or four of those guys and um, fishing the kelp patties. They also got a couple of videos of their fly patterns. Um, some very, very cool flies that those guys have. Next, I'm taking that UV crystal flash purple once again I'm just kind of staggering this out to give it a taper uh, cool thing with saltwater flies is these things can be a mess guys um, I've been fishing out there pretty much my entire life uh, I haven't fly fished as much as I would like to out there but I'm getting into it more and more um, but that's the beauty about saltwater fishing is these flies will get taken and there's really no proportions like a trout fly or anything like that. So you can see right there, I'm just kind of keeping that crystal flash, that UV minnow belly, all right there, kind of on the top, but spread it out. And uh, at, the, at the end, I'll show you this, but this, this fly, just a nice lateral line. Then to finish this off, as far as the materials, I'm gonna take some black, a little bit less than the white. I'm taking about an eighth of inch here once again stagger it out kind of give it a little taper pick the middle middle of the material pinch wrap right there in the front one two and I like to crank up bring that all to the top I'm gonna to fold this back on itself once again I'm gonna kind of spread that out with my with my uh, nail and I'm gonna come back onto this thread 
uh, with the thread back onto the material. Make sure everything's looking uniform. You can see right here I got a couple little stragglers on the bottom, not a big deal. I'll cut those out of there just to clean it up a little bit. And um, yeah, there's my fly right there. Essentially, it's done. Now I am going to put eyes on this, but you could fish this as is. Glue it up, it would be fine, guys. It would catch fish. Um, yeah, I would finish that off. I, take, I put a little bit of Zappa Gap there. You can super glue whatever you like. And uh, like I said, you could fish that as is, guys. That would fish fine. I'm just gonna use uh, some adhesive eyes. These are quarter inch. You can use dome eyes. You can use any eye you want. To glue this, I'm gonna be using the Loon Thick. And that's just gonna be to fill up volume. It's thick, fills up a lot of volume really quickly. Saying that though, with glue, take your time. Add small amounts at one time. It's a good idea to have a box in, maybe a little towel if you have to remove anything because it gets kind of messy from time to time. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover all the loon, which is um, bone dry uh, by Solar Res. This stuff, um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take two of these eyes. I like to use my box in here. It's just a little easier for me personally. And um, I'm gonna kind of pinch them back here and I'm just gonna set them in place where I want them. And uh, I'm gonna kind of just set it on there as is. Take another one here. I'm just gonna turn my vise if needed. And, uh, just set that on there and try to line them up. And um, as you can see, that's the space right there that I'll be filling in with glue. Um, we'll make like basically a little aerodynamic cone here. But what I like to do before I start the glue is I'll lift my, especially top here, and I'll kind of pinch this together. And I do that just to kind of get the shape of that uh, hair to go up. Um, I'm just gonna kind of manipulate this glue as needed. If you have to move it in your vise, go ahead and do that, but I'm gonna start on the top. And I'm just gonna fill this in. Here we go, guys. I'm just gonna add a little glue in here. Start it up here, just let it kind of ease its way down. Little bits at a time. Have a good torch ready. And as I'm playing with it, I'm just kind of moving it back and forth, letting that glue kind of naturally just flow into shape. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just change my hook too. I'm gonna put it down a little bit so that the glue runs down. You take it out of the vise if you need to do it too. But uh, guys, I'm just kind of filling this in slowly, kind of manipulating it with my nozzle or of the glue tip. You could also use your bakken, not a big deal. Now I'm covering the ice. I kind of like to run off the eyes a little bit just to kind of get that hair locked in there. And uh, as that's going, I'm kind of just turning it. You can blow on it as well. Kind of just to get it to take shape. I like to grab it. I'll turn it as I need to and then I'll just hit it with this once I see it kind of forming the shape that I really like. And you can see you're getting a really nice narrow profile and by uh, locking that in, you can see it keeps that wing up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in my vise. Uh, these rotary vices for this type of stuff are great. Uh, people often ask me what kind of vice they should get. I tell them to get one that uh, you like, but definitely get something with a rotary. It just makes life much easier. Once again, I'm gonna kinda just do one side at a time. I'm kinda coming off of the eyes kind of coming off the top here, add a little bit. If you've never done this before, just take your time. Um, as you can see, that head is looking sweet right there. I'm just gonna kind of zap that in the spot, in the place, I should say. And that's about it <clears throat> for my loon. Uh, you can see a nice little shape, aerodynamic, nice and thin. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Solar Res Bone Dry, and this is just basically like the hot coat guys. But this stuff dries extremely well. No tack and uh, it's really thin. That's why I don't use this. Now you could use other glues that are thicker to fill the, um, that volume. However, I had the loon and that's what I'm sticking with. I kind of turn this, let that go into place once again. And I'm gonna hit it with a torch uh, once I like 
how it looks, and I'm really happy with that. Last thing, uh, just trim up your fly if you need to. I keep these about six and a half, seven inches. There is a possibility that I'll be getting some smaller bait fish. Uh, I'll be jigging for them off of my sailboat. And people ask me, do you fish off your sailboat with a fly rod? Yes, I do. I've been known to go to the uh, Farnsworth Bank and on a sailboat, it's very tough. However, I have a little tiny skiff that I use. And I'll go around uh, looking for kelp patties. I'll go around looking for the fishing boats that are out there, the charter boats. Um, but you just gotta look for the birds, all these things that are gonna indicate that there's tuna, barracuda. Uh, I'm hoping they get maybe even some mahi-mahi. But um, keep this fly long, six and a half inches or so. You can trim it down out there on the boat if you need to. The last thing I'll do is I'll just kind of come in here with my scissors, give it a little bit of a taper, cut some flies or some of the strands out of there that are just uh, lagging. And there's your fly, guys. That's the variation of the Captain Von Podman um, minnow, the VP minnow. It's, um, it's a classic, guys. It just looks awesome. It's a very simple pattern, unweighted. Uh, I'll do a little video at the end here how I'll be fishing this um, 10 weight, the type of line, etc., etc. But uh, tie these up, get out there, have a great time, and uh, tight lines there, everybody.